presentation is about malaria and the direct and indirect strategies to tackle it in Ethiopia. We know that malaria is instant in the tropical regions. We also know that um, it's high in sub-Saharan Africa. So we can see here that in Mali here, this country in sub-Saharan Africa has a rate of around 100 cases per thousand people. In Ethiopia, the country we're interested in, the rate is lower at around 2.5 cases per thousand, but it still causes 620,000 cases internationally and um, globally each year. Um, de that's death, that's the mortality, annual mortality. And so tackling it is a key priority for scientists and has proved a real challenge over several decades. One of the reasons why it's been so difficult to crack malaria as a tropical disease is because it has two hosts. Part of its life cycle is completed in the human being and part of it is completed in the mosquito. So, for example, the mosquito hatches from a larvae which are already infected with the parasite and that becomes an adult fly. The fly then bites a human and infects the human and the parasite goes into the human blood from the bite of the mosquito. Once in the bloodstream, the um, parasite travels to the human liver. In the human liver, it undergoes a change and it then um, uh, erupts into the bloodstream of the human being, making them feel really unwell. And it bursts the blood, red blood cells in the human being. And then along comes the mosquito, which is not currently carrying the malarial parasite, and bites the human being that is infected. This mosquito then becomes a carrier. So to tackle this disease, there are two kinds of strategies. Strategies which prevent the human beings coming in contact with any mosquitoes and strategies which try to tackle the parasite and the mosquito. To do this then, you could um, try to eliminate all mosquitoes and try to get rid of the parasite. If you could make all um, the mosquitoes uh, die somehow, then there would be no malaria. Or you can prevent the people who have the parasite from um, falling sick. You can maybe vaccinate them um, or <clears throat> you might be able to protect them from being bitten. So there are two main kinds of strategies. In Ethiopia, there are two kinds of strategies which are deployed. There's the direct strategies which eradicate mosquitoes and the indirect strategies which have been a key focus for the government. And these include the use of nets and sprays. Direct strategies could include the removal of any sites where mosquitoes can breed. Mosquitoes only like stagnant water, so if you remove stagnant water from the environment by draining or by removing plastic containers, you could reduce the spread. Secondly, UCL have been working on gene editing in the mosquito, and they've been trying to make the male mosquito infertile so it cannot breed, so mosquitoes will die out. It's difficult to affect over a large, large area, which is the area affected by the disease, though. And finally, there, there are vaccines. There are several different kinds of vaccines which are currently in development, and these are being trialled in countries like Malawi. Role focused for the last five years, since 2011, on uh, trying to reduce the biting by mosquitoes. So the first way you can protect your population is by spraying indoor areas like schools, homes, um, health centres and you can spray them with an insecticide which will last three to six months. This insecticide means that any mosquitoes carrying the malarial parasite will die when they come in contact with the walls and with the building. However this only lasts for three to six months and secondly the mosquitoes because they're short life cycle they can rapidly become resistant to the insecticide and in fact the eight out of eleven different kinds of insecticide which are used in Ethiopia most of the mosquitoes are now resistant to. We know that malarial mosquitoes are active at night and they tend to feed at dusk when people are going to sleep. We know that in the tropics we have short day length and sudden onset of darkness means that's when the biting uh, time each 24 hour period um, starts. So if we could tackle when people are most vulnerable we would reduce the risk of them getting malaria and this is using nets. Um, these are called bed nets or insecticide treated nets, ITN, and these have been distributed widely within Ethiopia. Now, 73% of all women who are pregnant have access to one. Nearly half of children have access to a net and are sleeping under a net. And communities have been educated as to why this is really beneficial. However, in some areas there's been resistance to their use, and in some areas the behavioural change has not been as quick as was hoped. 
They've been used for vegetable nets, they've been used for fishing nets and even for wedding veils. So it is complicated to implement these programmes. It's not just the Ethiopian government, they're also working with other governments and with NGOs. An example of this would be the US President's Malarial Initiative, 40,000 different locations and over 20 million different um, nets distributed on a rolling programme to renew them over time. Um, this has been really, really key for reducing the infection rate. There are many other avenues of research which have been pursued. For example, there's an anti-parasitic drug which can be given to populations and this has been trialled. This parasitic drug, called ivermectin, kills the plasmodium parasite, but it doesn't kill the person. The parasite is dead and also the blood, which is then eaten by mosquitoes that bite the human being, is also then lethal to the mosquitoes. The mosquito is also destroyed. This is a kind of win-win situation and an exciting story for malaria. In summary then, you may be asked to evaluate whether direct or indirect strategies are better. And what here you need to remember is there's a range of different criteria for assessing these. Here's some things to consider in your evaluation. Is it tackling those who are most vulnerable? Those under five and pregnant women are the most vulnerable. Is it working carefully with communities and ensuring behavioural change is effective? Is there a regime change? For example, will President Trump continue to fund the Malarial Initiative? Will the strategy raise the development level for Ethiopia and increase the GDP? How will it do that? Are local people being partnered with effectively? Does the strategy tackle behaviour in these communities? And what is the likely duration of the funding? Will it continue? Can it continue? We know that 40% of Ethiopia's budget is currently going on malarial initiatives to try to reduce the um, mortality from this disease.